joined by Mr. Ilyasu Gadu, who is a public affairs anim analyst and a public commentator. He is in the studio and he will be throwing more light and, on some of these national issues that are trailing the newspaper headlines today. Hello and good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Hello, viewers. It's I'm a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you very much. I'm happy well, to be here too. Well, very quickly, let's uh, swing into motion. Uh, the issue of the ASU strike that has uh, been lingering in the country for a very long time. We've seen strikes come and go. We've seen students enroll for a four-year course and end up spending five, six, seven years due to strikes. And yet again, the wind of ASU strike is blowing across the country. ASU has met with the federal government. And as usual, the meeting is inconclusive, which has been reconvened to September 6th. What do you make of this new development that is rather very discouraging to most Nigerian students? Yeah, it's quite um, unfortunate, really, because the issue of ASU has become like a recurring decimal in Nigerian um, public affairs. And uh, it seems the government and the university teachers do not seem to have a meeting point about what to do. And this has quite, you know, unfortunately affected, you know, educational, the, the, the education in the tertiary uh, system of uh, education in the country. And it's very unfortunate because uh, it, it, it projects us as a country that is not serious about our educational system. And that uh, whatever it is, you know, Nigerian parents have become so exasperated about this, the failure to resolve the issues, lingering, lingering issues between ASU and the federal government on what to be, needs to be done. And you could see the corollary of this. People, you know, sending their children to even places as being a republic next door neighbor. Yes. And uh, Togo and the rest of them, desperate to be able to escape, you know, the, 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 the frequent strikes, frequent strikes that do not help the educational system. So it's very unfortunate. Um, I believe um, both of them, uh, both the ASU and the federal government. Yeah, people are so fed up, really, fed up with the whole thing because it shows insensitivity to the parents who have to spend so much money to educate their children. It never was like that in this country. And uh, Nigerian parents who, whose wards and children have to go to university are so, 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 I mean, they have just gotten tired of the whole thing and they just wish that something would be done. It appears that the federal government, which is the, you know, the, what do I call it now, is not doing what it needs to do. And the ASU people are not considerate well, well, their well, demands. Well, well it, it appears that there they are always demands on the table from ASU to the federal government. And government after government, successive regimes after, after regime, tend to, you know, proffer solutions to these demands maybe halfway, maybe fully, but there is always a demand, a bone of contention coming from ASU quarters, which in turn distresses the federal government and also distresses the students who are at the receiving end of this battle of elephants. Yeah, it's true. I mean, when two elephants fight, as in this case, the federal government and ASU, it's the grass that suffers. And uh, I, would, I would like to add, advice really it's an advice i'm giving as a nigerian and yes. also a parent that for asu they don't have to get everything in one go i mean this is an ongoing thing university education is going to be with us for as long as this country exists so it's it's advisable for asu and its officials to go for low-hanging fruits those that are in, of immediate importance those that they can get and move on you can't always get everything on the city and you must not insist that if everything is not done you know uh, you then you can withdraw your services you are not doing any any favor to the students and you're not doing any favor to the parents because times are hard it takes quite a lot to you know to, to train or to educate a child and if somebody has put all that money together to be able to bring up their children yes. in school 
and then they get you know uh, this sort of uh, niggling issues really then then it's it's really really very unfortunate and both the asu i i can understand from the point of view of the government that okay things are hard we cannot allocate all the funds we have to this what these people are asking for but then i would prefer that asu really should look at what it can get at the moment and then resume school resume the services they're providing at the universities and then you know you know uh, go for more as it goes but to withdraw services completely is not helpful yes. and it renders the educational system you know uh, you know unfortunate and uh, we, we we really parents really want something to be done i mean people used to have some sympathy for us but with the continued um you know strikes and the continued threat to withdraw services without regards to what is happening in the country in the country it has exasperated the parents and but, the nigerian public uh, now, now according to uh, a report from the meeting that was held yesterday uh, asu is seeking a comprehensive overhaul of one the university system including improved infrastructure enhanced academic freedom and a more sustainable funding model. If you take a look at these four items, infrastructure, enhanced academic freedom, and more sustainable funding model, three actually, uh, there is still another one, which is the revital a release of revitalization funds for universities, renegotiation of the 2009 FGN ASU agreement. Now let's take it from the very top, an improved infrastructure. What do you make of our university uh, structures across the country uh, considering the fact that also there was something in the news this morning that uh, a disco has uh, the La a lagos disco has disconnected uh, the university of lagos's um, electricity due to unpaid uh, tariffs firstly are our educational structures in the tertiary system really really that's much of an issue for us to be considering going on a strike well i only i will talk from my own perspective because i i i am i mean i am i would say i'm one of the old school yes i i school at the time when universities were well well structured in terms of infrastructure in terms of services in terms of a lot of things i would say that yes during my days i mean University in Nigeria is a place to go. Uh, we had foreign students even coming in to school here in Nigeria. In fact, struggling to come here. Students not just even from within the West African subregion, but from outside as far as India and other parts of the world. Yes. And it was something to behold. You went to the universities, you to the universities in Nigeria, you see the campuses serene, you see the infrastructure quite you know, comparable to any uh, any uh, any university any around the world. Yeah. yeah. So it's and that is because there was a lot of emphasis on providing the atmosphere for people because it's not just about really going to school, but you have to school in an environment where it is serene and attractive because you are talking you are producing the leaders of tomorrow and in my days yes this way that you could find those but now the university system has become failure to reform the university system providing infrastructure as part of uh, you know improving the educational system yes. because you know you don't in students in my days students went, went to university i mean went to lectures in lecture theaters in rooms that are well provided with furniture and all that yes and now what we see, uh, my last visit to one of the universities, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. You could imagine a, a situation where stu students, uh, students are crammed in a room, no place to even sleep well, to even read, and then to even some even were cooking in the hostels, and then a lot of things that water is not, you know, well provided, and as you can hear in the case of uh, Lego University of Lagos now. Uh, light, you know, the, the power has been uh, cut off yes. because of uh, non-payment of, uh, or rather, backlog of uh, tariff. So all these things are, the university system has not been immune to all the deterioration of the systems in the country. Every other system you know, you and I know, or you have, be, you have experienced in the past, yes. has gone bad now. And this is failure to reform 
not just the, the university system, but the entire country itself in terms of economic, social, and other aspects of life. So the universities are not there, but that is not to say that it is a permissible or it's a, it should be excused. Mm -hmm. Because you could, you could compare the graduates of those days and now. Graduates of those days came out of environments that were serene, that were conducive, and they, they had opportunity to learn. Under, atmo under the atmosphere that was really, really uh, good. Good. As as opposed to what is obtainable. What now. is obtainable now, now? Now, could this also be the reason why ASU is demanding um, enhanced academic freedom? Now, this is a rather vague demand, enhanced academic freedom. What do they mean by enhanced academic freedom? Because somebody listening now might be wondering, is there any form of restriction to the freedom of learning in our Nigerian universities. Yeah, this is one of the things that really, you know, baffles a lot of people. Because if you and I, I cannot, for, for, the, for the love of me, I cannot really understand what they mean by that. I mean, they know what they mean. But for me, yes. for me and for many Nigerians and for many parents, this, this has got to be inconsequential so to speak i'm sorry if the asu guys you know are feeling bad about it but look i don't see i don't know about any university in this country that is not being allowed or any any lecturer or any any teacher or teachers in this country yes. that are not being allowed freedom to do what that what they're supposed to do freedom to teach what they're supposed to do in the curriculum so i i this is one of those things that really really the academic the asu people should really not bring it to the table. It's something that that is what I wouldn't consider as low hanging fruit. These are things that are that are, that are not really, really that are just peripheral. Yeah, then. let's go for the main things. The main things. The things that if you talk about the structure of the university system, the structures and the, the improvement of the infrastructure, and, that and also uh, in terms of funding, adequate funding to yes. the universities, and also. It also the universities will also search the they put the beam of light on themselves because some of these things are things that have that the the, the university ad administrators have to answer questions for. Why is it that in those days when the funding was not as much as it is now, things were being things done. were being done? Why is it that now we have this? The answer should if you want to come to justice. You want to, you're going to come to come to you have to come with equity. Yes, with there are some of the things. Yeah, some of us would want to appreciate the demands or some of the appreciate the position of the ASU, but we also want the ASU to search the beam light on itself. Because some of the things they're asking for or they're accusing the government is, is right there with them. The university administration, some lecturers, I mean some vice chancellors and administration actually embark on projects that are frivolous. Projects that are not even up to standard. Because if you look at the university, the first and second generation universities, if you look at the infrastructure they had, they were infrastructure that could last. And, this is, and subsequent administrators were required to improve on them. Because they were built at the time when buildings, when the code of buildings, code of infrastructure was strictly obeyed. Now you go to most universities, you see infrastructure that do not even fit that environment. Now, now maybe if we, if we talk about enhanced academic freedom, uh, could we also look at it from the point of view where uh, things like sex for grades is now 18 in most Nigerian universities, most federal universities, or even state universities, and also the issue or the menace of cultism, which has hampered, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of students from freely and openly uh, carrying out the studies that took them to the universities in the first place. Could this be the reason why ASU is calling for enhanced academic freedom? Some of these vices that have been trailing Nigerian universities ever since. Well, I don't want to second guess the ASU. They have to explain what they mean by that so that we can understand what they're saying. But my own understanding of it is maybe the ASU people are, are, are not happy or are alarmed at the at some of the practices that are happening in the universities as you said the sex for, for marks grades, grades which has become quite uh, very serious in many universities now and uh, there have been one or two cases where some university uh, uh, people lecturers and professors have been found guilty of such practices now this is a very serious matter because uh, it, 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 
it detracts from the integrity of the university. It's not a place where such things should occur. And um, the also issue of cultism, it has now become a norm in universities to have cults. And uh, this restricts the freedom of the students to school because they are individuals who are perpetually university students yes because the university provides some kind of security some kind of atmosphere for them to continue their nefarious activities and mark you even some of the lecturers themselves some of the teachers themselves have been found to be involved in some of these things so it's 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 something that as i said again asu has to check itself it doesn't have to wait for the federal government to do it's something that it has to start from its own end to find that without those lecturers or all those teachers that are giving the universities a bad name in terms of cult related activities and sex for grades and other you know uh, infractions that are occurring at the university system which gives the university itself you know a uh, bad reputation detracts from what it's supposed to do and this does not have to be what the federal government should do is something that the ASU itself has to do. Well, well, this appears like an internal rot, an internal deterioration of the system, which is, you know, subsequently creating this rift between ASU and the government. They are not handling what they are supposed to handle internally in the first place. Yes, that's it. That's it. Because, I mean, what, what, would, what would the federal government do if a professor, for instance, decides to say, look, if you do not buy my 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 my, my, my handouts, yes, you know you're, would, not, you're not passing, you're not passing. My, my course. What will the federal government do on that? It is something that the ASU itself should look at morally and say, is it the right thing to do? Must you? In my days in university, we don't uh, handouts are optional. Nobody has to force you to buy or to collect handouts. You, we even tell our lecturers to. We, sometimes we even reject the handouts. We prefer to be given the references to go to the library ourselves and get out this because it was rigorous. Now, if you rely on the on, on, on the on the vice, on the on the professors or the teachers' handouts alone, you might restrict yourself from the from from getting the knowledge you are supposed to get yes. and to expressing yourselves. So in those days, this is. But now it has become mandatory. Professors mandate students to be able to to get there in fact they allocate marks because those marks are sent uh, are sold via the sale of handouts yeah via the sale of handouts and the issue of sex too for marks it was it was it's something that is, has become uh, too, too rampant too rampant in, in now exactly so are you now asking the federal government is is also right really in asking the in, in including it as part of there are demands to the federal government. What, what, even, what, what, barely aching about it. Still talking about demands. Um, recently, the federal government rolled out the student loan uh, program, which a lot of university students have been able to get access to. It came as a beacon of hope to many uh, Nigerian students and families uh, who have, you know, children in Nigerian universities as well who might, you know, be facing some sort of financial constraints. However, ASU is also demanding for a more sustainable uh, funding model. Uh, in terms of funding now, are, are we talking about funding to the universities or some of these policies that the federal government is rolling out to help mitigate the hardship that the universities are facing don't you think that perhaps they're not being thankful enough to the federal government yeah this is what i say you know sorry to say that but some of our lecturers or some of our people in asu have found a have found some kind of joy in being unnecessarily uh, truculent not being able to sit down and you know look at the things from a very reasonable perspective I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of the federal government. I believe the federal government too has quite a lot to, to, be, to, be, to be put on the spot for yes. in terms of these issues. But first and foremost, you know, um, I mean, when you, you hear university t teachers saying, oh, uh, a professor goes up with XYZ salary, well, a legislator or who is not educated, look, it's your choice. If you want to join the legislature, go and yeah, resign. I mean, the, the, you are uh, free to contest. You are free to contest, but you can't, you know, because of that, now hold the university system to ransom, because 
the, the society allocates you know responsibilities based on it i'm not saying it's right but then you have to ask yourself whether what you are doing is right and in this particular case the the the, 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 the federal government out of its own generosity and understanding has said okay we want to roll out this policy to be able to help assist the students to access loans for it's happening all over the world in many countries you go students go to school based on some of these considerations and i believe again that asu rather than stand in the way of this initiative should come out with okay federal government we've seen what you've done we want to also weigh in with our own perspectives and let us see how we can let us start a pilot program let yes. us see how it goes how it takes us let us see how you know the, the, the process goes as we move along so that there are issues when well, there are issues in terms of expanding the scope in terms of other things that are necessary to help it then we can go but to stand in the way and say no everything the federal government comes out i mean i'm not in support of let me just say it again but i think it's not it does not do a favor it does not cast the ASU in good light if they continue to stand in the way. Because at the end of the day, it becomes like every ASU regime or every, every ASU um, executive yes. feels that there's something that they, ha they have to get out of the federal government's pockets. Not only that, every ASU executive feels that wants to compete with the other ASUs for who has held the government by the that part of the autonomy yes. anatomy yes that you and i don't want to talk I, about I, I understand. Yeah. so they want to say oh during my time i did this this was my own time we're going to be you know so it's so 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 it's now a competition of who is the fiercest as you uh, executive yes. successive as you executive it doesn't help anybody it doesn't even help the asu guys because the responsibility of running the university system starts with them it's not with the federal government because the federal government can only provide the environment. I mean, I mean it's, it's also similar to what the NLC does, you know, regime after regime. Every new government that comes in, NLC, you know, makes demands, and which, which are reasonable demands. I mean, looking at the uh, new minimum wage that has just been passed into law, the 70,000 Naira new min minimum wage, that is a fruitful... A fight mm. for the Nigerian civil, uh, you know, civil servants. However, in terms of the, of ASU's demands, it, it appears that some of these demands are just, you know, plucked out of nowhere and thrown at the federal government for them to to take action. Yeah, and then some of them too. It's like, you know, shifting the goalpost. When you when when the federal government or the government brings out something and say, look, hey, hang on. We have this policy. Well, I think it's good. Let's see how it works. Yes. And then, because the ASU has taken a position of opposition, you know, opposition to what whatever the government does is opposition. So even if it's a good thing, ASU would not take responsibility. It's okay, let's run with it. Let's see how it works. Let's see how we can tweak it along the line when we see some of these uh, some of the issues that come up. No, it must be opposed. For whatever it's that's the that's the resin dot of the whole damn thing. Yes. And then it makes us to be constantly ill at ease, constantly at war with the government for no just reason. Sometimes, yes, people have become so tired of these things really because it appears that what the ASU wants to do all the time is to oppose the government. Even if like the student loan scheme, it's a good initiative. Yes. I mean we should give the government the the the, the, the 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 needed credit the credit because and it's a beginning it may even go into something bigger but it's a pilot scheme take it with you run it tweak it and bring back suggestions okay we've seen along the line this is what we observed we need we need to emphasize here or de-emphasize i, I mean it's an academic union filled with intellectuals exactly so certainly they that is what i'm saying they should start with more modified models exactly the federal government exactly so and i believe a lot of them too had sat previously in the federal government yes. and they should be able to say look based on us on our experiences at with the uh, at, at, at that level we think we have, we have one or two things to say to add to the demands and to if making the university a better place 
because that is where that is the incubators of our ideas and the, the, and the, the, the people who actually train the future leaders so they should be able to look at that as look at that from the perspective of their own responsibility uh, all right let's uh, hope that they also take a look at you know the entire system as also part of their responsibility and not just uh, delegating things to the federal government uh, to do yeah. well still talking about strikes strike actions uh, the NLC president comrade Joe Ajero is honoring the invitation of the Nigeria police at the force headquarters in Abuja today now there's tension as uh, national officers state councils affiliate unions are on standby at the force headquarters as well as state commands to show solidarity with the NLC president we hope to bring you live feed from the force headquarters in the course of this program but that is um, another issue that has been in the news lately but prominently this morning uh, comrade Joe Ajero has been invited by the police uh, on the allegations or charges of terrorism financing in relation with the hashtag and bad governance protests that just held recently uh, in the country firstly do you think that comrade joe who openly washed his hands of the hashtag and bad governance protest could have had a hand in any of the uh, uprising that took place in the country recently well uh, for me from my own perspective i think it's a catch-22 situation in the sense that you know um either way um we we we, we need to the, the police has a duty really to do what they're supposed to be doing um i mean because but the honors is also on the police to prove its point uh, you cannot just wake up and accuse an individual a very important individual like that of terrorism for of very very grave uh, allegations uh, which which uh, which would lead to maybe trainable reasonable charges in, on him yes because if it is proven that he was involved proven without reasonable doubt because this is an accusation that is very heavy these are accusations that are very heavy and they have to be proven they don't just have to be based on conjectures or based on innuendos or based on the whims and caprices of people in the police or security setup yes because you know once this has been proved and it can only be proven in the court of law in a competent court of law the proof police says it has its charges and all and the process has to go through you know through the courts competent court of jurisdiction yes. to prove that yes we actually have proof that joe ajero has been involved in this with and then that has to be you know uh he has he has to it has to be not with malice or with malice intended okay so it's the the, the 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 ball is in the hands of the police and this is not a kind of case that you have to be you know toyed with trifled with because it's it's about the security the, and of the individual and the security of the nation so if the police cannot prove its case then then there's got to be, you know, the, the police authorities who have been censured and taken to task I, over it. I, I mean, at a time when when the when ASU is threatening to go on strike, the NLC is also threatening to go on another strike if any harm should befall their president. If you remember, sometime early this month, there was an attack at the NLC headquarters here in Abuja. A certain floor of the um, of the building was was uh, attacked, mm. and this was late at night. To this day, no information has been given by the Nigeria Police or any other person as, with regards to who carried out that attack. Now, documents were carted away, uh, books and other documents were burnt. Do you perhaps think that somehow this invitation by the Nigeria Police could be linked to the attack that took place earlier this month? Well. What we talk about here now yes. is being going to be based on conjecture because the details of those uh, events and the allegations forwarded by the police 
uh, put forth by the police against Comrade Ajero yes. have to be proven. And this, are, as I said again, let me emphasize it. These are not things to be trifled. I know these are very, very tense times. In fact, I will go forward and call it more or less like a summer of discontent in the country. And these are these are based on existential issues in the country. Things like, you know, the hunger, the, a lot of things happening. Yes. yes, and people are, nerves are afraid because of, uh, you know, happiness and developments in the country. And uh, the police will be under a lot of pressure to be able to, you know, uh, bring up or rather to be seen to be doing something about some of these things while also understanding understanding that the constitution allows people to go on legal peaceful protests yeah. so the police should not be seen as trying to impede that with frivolous allegations if i come out and say look okay your face is this and that i'm not able to prove it the onus is on me to prove it <laughs> because beyond reasonable doubt yeah beyond reasonable doubt it's not just to say oh we've seen it and then they should be able to also uh, you know allow Comrade Ajero to observe his fundamental rights this is not a matter of just detaining him and then doing some kind of uh, you know charade charade and bringing him up and down police stations you take him today you detain him today you take him to another we don't want that it okay yes fine you should do your work but it has to be proven because if it's not proven and, and the police should not be seen to be involved in things that you know are trying to improve impede people have a right to come, come out and protest yes people have a right to come and express their views about what is happening especially since they are being affected by what is happening so they have a right. You cannot be buying a bag of rice at 100,000 and say people should not cry. They have to cry. As, and as the Constitution has allowed them to cry. And the police should understand that. They should not be seen as trying to impede those rights of the people to come out and say what they said. But having said that, the onus is on the, on the police to prove, to prove that. And they should not, in the process of trying to prove it, restrict the freedom of Comrade Ajuro or any other person that is protesting against this, as long as it is lawful. Well, as long as it is lawful, let's uh, hope that the Nigeria police does justice to Comrade Joe Ajero, and let's also hope that the NLC um, national officers, the state councils, and affiliate unions who are converging uh, at the force headquarters and other uh, state commands also coordinate themselves in a good manner so as to not um, create any rift that would lead to violence and subsequently the strike action that they are Yeah, these are tense times in the country. Let yes. us admit that. And those tense times are not just coming from the air. They are coming from the feelings of people about yes. the situation in the country, as I said, existential situation in the country. So people have a right to express their feelings and to get government to hear them out. Yes. And they can do that as provided by the constitution. And the police should not impede that, should not be seen by any way to impede peaceful, lawful protests and expressions because the constitution guarantees it. And if the charges leveled at Ajero is in line with police or the security forces trying to impede those rights, then they are. Then, then they are working. They, then they are working against the constitution and the rights of the people, and yes. we should not allow that to happen. Well, let's uh, hope that that doesn't <laughs> happen. And uh, to wrap up this discussion, we just have about five minutes uh, remaining. Uh, Elder statesman Body George has called out uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar over his um, intention to contest for presidency in 2027 telling him to forget about the next election, but rather look to 2031, which is way too far ahead. Now, there's, a, there's an exchange of words between these two elder statesmen. Firstly, what do you make of the rift between these two, considering that, obviously, they are elderly and shouldn't be engaging in these uh, sort of public battles? So, the first thing I want to say is that, is uh, Bodijo talking from Ghana or from Nigeria? Well, <laughs> that's that's the big question. <laughs> I believe you see he's speaking from Nigeria. <laughs> what is he doing in Nigeria? I thought he said. I, well, well, he said he was going to leave. 
So why is he in Nigeria now? That's that's left for Has he apologized to Nigerians for that statement? Anyway, it's anyway, I think Bodhi George has the right to explain. They are politicians anyway. These are rhetorics, yes. you know. And they are, they are politicians trying to, you know, square themselves up to make a point. And Bodhi George has a right to make those uh, statements, statements yeah. because he's trying to sort of, he feels that Atiku has been in the race for too long. He has, he's a, more or less a constant decimal in the political in the, stakes. In, 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 so he's in trying to give him an honest advice. Yeah. Okay, Oga, you've had so much this thing. You are a former vice president. Leave it for the young ones, which is, I believe is good. And, uh, well, Atiku is saying that, look, I'm not interested in 20, uh, 2027. My issue is now. People are suffering and all that. Whether he means it or whether he's trying to deflect the accusations yes. by Bodhi George, uh, it's, it's neither here nor there. What we want is, okay, Bodhi George is expressing his views, maybe from Lagos. I thought he was going to say it from Ghana. But he's expressing his views, which he's right to do. He has a right to do. And uh, the two of them are this. But the real issue that affects Nigerians today is the existential issues of hunger and all mm -hmm. that. Atiku lives in Dubai. Occasionally he comes to Nigeria. But they just supposed to be in Ghana. So they should leave the Nigerians who are suffering from what is happening. To face the hardship. To face the hardship. And not, these, are, these are fat cats, if uh, I use that point. I, I mean, Atiku himself has been in the news lately for openly and vigorously criticizing the uh, government of President Asiwaji Bola Metinubu. In one of his statements, he said that the president has mortgaged the future of Nigerians to his family, friends, and business associates. He has been making a lot of comments. Do you think that perhaps Bodhi George is speaking on behalf of the president, countering Atiku for the many, many comments he has been making towards the president? That's why I'm surprised that Bodhi George is talking about, is, uh, supposed to, is countering uh, the, the, the president. Because he had said he was going to leave. Yeah, yeah so I, I'm, I'm so power. surprised. But anyway, even Atiku himself said if he came to power, he was going to sell... Uh, um, if he managed to get to power, he was going to sell some of the uh, country's assets to himself and his friends. So what's new here? Eh? What's new? Atiku himself said it, didn't he? Well, he did. He did. He said if he, if he gets to the presidency, he was going to sell the country's assets to himself. And even pointedly said NNPC. So maybe Tinubu is taking uh, Atiku's advice. But I would, I, would, I would like to get out of the fight between these two guys because, look, this one was a former governor yes. in what is called Ondo and uh, Ekiti now. And he's a, he's, a, he's a general, a brigadier general, equivalent of brigadier general, Navy Commodore. He yes. retired. And he's doing well, apparently. Atiku, I can't say more about him because he lives in Dubai, Dubai and occasionally comes to Nigeria to a see... A former vice president. A former vice president. A successful businessman. So, and, yes. and, I mean, he has it all. So he has it all. So, but... The people of the country are suffering. The people of the country are facing hunger issues. The people are, are angry at a lot of things. And uh, you see these two fat cats talking about exchanging pleasantries, so to speak. In, uh, this oh, <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, I'm afraid this is all time will permit us to take on this particular segment. But I must thank you very much, Mr. Elias Ugadu, for finding the time to come on the program. Let me ask you a bit. Yes. Can you borrow me your beard? <laughs> well, after the show, I will do that. <laughs> okay, so thank, thank you, you very much. much.